Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bronwyn and I am a skincare specialist by trade with 8 plus years of career experience plus experience here on YouTube. On my channel you'll find skincare related topics such as tips, tricks, and tutorials. You'll also find makeup tutorials occasionally, hair tutorials, fashion styling videos, and lifestyle related beauty videos. Otherwise, without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Today we're going to be talking about my evening routine. My evening routine doesn't vary too much, but sometimes the products that I use change here and there. And you guys are always asking me for updated routine videos. So today I'm gonna to be introducing to you guys the recent things I've been doing in my evening routine for everything. We're talking skin, hair, body, even like what I do and what I wear when I go to sleep, which can play a huge impact on your actual evening skincare routine and hair routine. So let's talk about number one, which is, so the first thing I wanna talk about in this video is how I go to bed. And this video is kindly supported and sponsored by Lily Silk. If you don't know what Lily Silk is, Lily Silk is a silk company that produces high quality silks and distributes high quality silks at a more affordable rate for people who want to incorporate silk into their lifestyle. And you might be wondering like, why, why does this matter? What's it matter? Silk is actually amazing in your evening routine. And I have honestly been using silk products for years. Um, I first started using silk products in the form of pillowcases because I used to suffer with really, really bad acne. And using a silk pillowcase not only is amazing for acne as silk does not absorb anything. It doesn't hold bacteria. It doesn't absorb your skincare. It really is an amazing fabric to use on your pillowcase to help your skin be the best skin that it can be and actually benefit from all the treatments and products that you use on it. So if you're suffering from acne, you have dry skin, or you just are concerned about aging in general, silk is a great pillowcase to have on your pillow to benefit you in all these aspects. It's anti-friction and pulling, so it actually works to prevent wrinkles and fine lines in your face because you're not getting that pulling and tension that you would get from a standard fabric pillowcase such as polyester or cotton. Not only is silk amazing for using on your pillowcase for your skin, but it's also amazing for your hair. The same rule applies with your skin with your hair. If you're using hair products and you have dry skin, the silk is not going to absorb those hair products. They're actually going to be absorbed completely by, you, by your hair when you sleep. Conversely, the same friction and tension methods apply with your silk pillowcase and your hair. So it's better for preventing breakage while you sleep. So if you have a dry hair type or you have fine brittle hair and you experience a lot of breakage, using that silk pillowcase is actually gonna protect your hair by preventing friction and crinkling of your hair and all that nasty stuff. I love my silk pillowcase from Lily Silk. It really is high quality. It has a high slick rate, so I get no friction at all. No tugging or pulling when I sleep, and my skincare is glowing when I wake up in the morning. In addition to the silk pillowcase, I also always make sure whenever I'm tying my hair back in my evening routine that I'm using one of the silk hair ties and silk hair dyes really do revolutionize your hair routine. I actually stopped tying my hair back like a few years ago because my hair is just so dry and brittle by nature that I was experiencing a lot of breakage from using standard hair ties. Whenever I would put my hair up and, and I would take it out again, there would be little chunks and little breakages of hair in my hands. There would be hair broken off and tangled around my hair ties and it really just was telling me that I need to stop. But if you're using a silk hair tie, it doesn't have that same friction and grip that you would get with a standard hair tie. So I really don't get any breakage when I'm using a scrunchie that's made of silk, which I have in my hair today i don't know if you can see but they're so nice and gentle on my hair i don't experience any breakage so whenever i'm doing my evening skincare routine it's pretty much the only time that i actively tie up my hair on a day-to-day -day basis i always make sure i'm using one of my silk scrunchies because it's not going to pull out my hair and it's not going to break my hair speaking of my evening routine when it comes to my bedding i also love sleeping in silk which i'm wearing today i have on one of the lily silk dresses in black specifically in black because I'm gonna be honest, you guys, I sweat. I am a sweater at night. I am 
guilty of ruining bed sheets from my sweating. I get night sweats so easily. I don't know why. I've always been like this my whole life, but I will literally stain the bed with sweat marks. And it, it doesn't happen every night, but it happens more often than the average person. Like you can guarantee like certain triggers will get me. Like if my stomach is a little bloated, I'm most likely going to sweat that night. It's really, really odd. So I love sleeping in fabrics that aren't going to stain and that aren't going to absorb that sweat. I like wearing something that's going to help whisk away that moisture and silk and silk is really great for that. Silk doesn't absorb moisture, it doesn't absorb oils, it doesn't absorb odors or bacteria. So when I suffer from my night sweats, I'm not going to ruin my outfit and it's going to help whisk away that moisture. So when I wake up in the middle of the night soaked, I'm not gonna freeze or be cold or be wet in my own sweat. Not only that, it helps prevent odors. So often when we sweat or just when we sleep in general, a lot of our pajamas and sleepwear, if made from standard materials such as polyester or cotton, will absorb the odors that we produce when we sleep. So you'll notice that maybe your pajamas get stinky really fast or they just smell stuffy or gross. I know I used to experience that, especially as someone who suffers from night sweats here and there. So the silk doesn't get that. I'm able to get so many uses out of my night dress that I have from Lily Silk because it doesn't absorb those odor causing bacteria, especially when I sweat. It wicks away that moisture so I don't wake up freezing and soaked in my own sweat at night. And it's gentle on the skin, so any moisturizers that I put on after my shower or bath aren't gonna be absorbed in the silk. So not only has it been great for my night sweat problem and odor problem from my night sweat and stopping me from staining the bed from my sweat, but it's also great because the Lily Silk dress is not absorbing any of of my moisturizing creams that I put on my body and I put a lot on my body because I'm dry I'm dry everywhere so if you guys are interested in any of the lily silk products that I've been using in my evening routine definitely check them out in the description box down below I have a direct link to the products that I got from lily silk and I also have a discount code for you guys so if you want to get a nice little discount on their products then you can definitely use that as well they're a really great silk company they have so many options for you aside from my actual sleeping and and sleeping fabrics. My hair care definitely isn't the most intense out of all four of the things that I do in my evening routine, which I'm trying to actively work harder on in 2021. Recently, I saw on TikTok a hairstylist recommending that every single evening you should be putting a hair oil in the last 15 centimeters of your hair. And I've always followed this rule with the last 15 centimeters of your hair with hair treatments after I shower, but throughout the week, I never really followed up on it. In my evening routine, and especially in my after shower routine, which is every other day, I've really upped my hair care routine, especially when it comes to scalp care. So let's start off with the post shower routine. When I get out of the shower, I always apply some form of hair cream. I have been using this for years. This is the Pantene Pro-V Moisturizing Combing Cream Leave-In Combing Cream Detangles and Quenches Dry Straw-like Hair, which is a hundred percent me. Is this the best hair cream product? I don't know. It's the first hair cream product I ever used that wasn't a hair oil. For years prior, I was strictly just using hair oils, which I realized my hair needs more than just oil. It needs something that's actually going to hydrate the hair and give something that's going to absorb more intensely into the hair. I actually really, really love this, but if you guys have any recommendations for something that's similar but has better ingredients, I would love to get your opinion on it. I think this is great, but it definitely could be more beneficial to my hair with more beneficial ingredients, but it does make a huge impact on my hair, even though the ingredients are me something more to live for. Like there's no keratin, there's no biotin like I think this could be better this really does help hydrate my hair and make it more manageable and softer after using that I've been using two additional products post shower after the hair cream I have recently been using the Schwarzkopf blonde me shine elixir for blonde hair I'm obviously not blonde but it does have a nice little shimmer to it and what I like about it is that it has keratin and some beneficial ingredients in there to help strengthen your hair strands and follicles without being too heavy. Now again, this is a product that definitely does leave me 
wanting more, but it does have some beneficial ingredients in there. As I said, like the keratin and hydrolyzed uh, castor oil as well. But again, it does leave me feeling like I want more out of it. What I like about it is it's not heavy, so I'm able to layer it over my other products without getting my hair looking greasy. But because it is so important to apply a hair oil to your hair, I have been trying to make sure I add some sort of oil product into my routine. This one is the TO112, which I think is a Toronto company brand from a hair salon. I got it gifted to me. Uh, a year ago and I love the smell of it. It has lime clove oil in it, which is interesting. It has kernel oil, argan oil, jojoba oil, tamano seed oil, which I haven't heard of before. So essentially it's a serum that combines multiple oils into it. And what I like about it is it's not too oily. And since I have really fine, thin hair, I can't use oils that are super, super heavy as it really weighs down my hair and makes me look greasy. But I have recently learned from TikTok that I think I have low porosity hair which explains why just putting a simple oil on my hair doesn't work for me because I don't have porous strands. So I need to use ingredients and products that are more lightweight and easily absorbed into the hair shaft rather than a dense molecular level oil that's just gonna sit on top. So what I've been doing is I've been taking one to two pumps of this and one to two pumps of this and combining them in the palm of my hands, mixing them together and rubbing them into my hair from the last 15 centimeters down. This has been a great way to help the oil deliver into my hair. And since I've been doing this, I do find that my hair overall feels less dry than it was before. Now, aside from things that I apply topically on my hair, I recently have been trying to actively take better care of my scalp and I have been incorporating a scalp tonic into my routine and it's really helped with my itchy dry scalp. The product that I've been using is the Sun By Me Sika Peptide Anti Hair Loss Derma Scalp Tonic. This is a multi peptide solution tonic that is lightweight and water based so it doesn't make my scalp oily shiny or greasy and it gets rid of the itchiness and it's supposed to help stimulate your scalp and also give the peptides that in there that help to stimulate hair growth and make sure that your roots of your hair and your scalp is healthy. Now, I'm almost done the bottle. I have about this much left. I've been using it for a few months. Do I feel like it's helped stimulate hair growth? No, I don't think it has, but I have noticed that while I've been using this, my hair loss has reduced a little bit. Now, I'm still getting hair loss where when I run my fingers through my hair, like I often get like strands of hair in my hands, but I feel like the quantity has reduced slightly since using this product. I may purchase this again, but I'm also curious to try different products. So if you guys have been using any anti-hair loss tonics for your scalp, let me know what ones you've been using and if you enjoyed it or not. I would love to find new hair growth tonics for the scalp that you guys recommend. Aside from that, I am trying to take up practices to help regrow my hair as I do have hair loss from aging. So I'm trying to actively massage my scalp more, specifically at the top of my head to stimulate blood flow. And I guess, it, I don't know if it's been working. I'm just gonna keep doing it, but it feels like it's the right thing to do. So I've been doing this almost every single day. I do this every time I shower, which is every other day to every three days. And then I try to remember to do it daily because technically this should be done daily, but I forget. Aside from the hair tonic, I have been trying to do daily scalp moisturizing because my scalp is dry. So aside from either doing the scalp tonic daily when I remember, I otherwise go in with the Kopari Coconut Rose Toner on my scalp and I will literally just like pick up my hair and spritz it in at the areas where I feel really, really dry. Compared to this, the coconut water is definitely more moisturizing and does leave a slight residue on the roots of my hair. So I only find I use this one more so when I'm coming close to my shower cycle. Otherwise I'll be using this as it doesn't leave a residue. Moisturizing your scalp is equally as important as moisturizing your face. Your scalp also gets dry and needs care, if, especially if we want to prevent hair loss and have healthier, stronger, more shiny growing hair as hair growth starts from the root. So I am trying 
to add these habits into my routine, especially since these never were habits before. It's hard to build those habits from the base and trying to have healthier, better routines, but it definitely has helped with my scalp health. I'm not having as many dry skin flakes. I'm not as itchy as I was before on my scalp, and I'm hoping that it will in the long run have a benefit on my hair growth and hair quality. When it comes to my body care post shower, I'm not as good at it as I should be, but these are the products that I have been using post shower to moisturize my crazy dry body skin. This winter, I have specifically been really obsessed and in love with the Kopari Coconut Body Milk. Now, I don't normally like using coconut oil products, especially on my face. You won't see me using straight up coconut oil on my body that often, and you will never see me using straight up coconut oil on my face. I don't believe in using it on your face. It's very comedogenic and acne prone causing, and doesn't really have any scientific proof of actually having a benefit on your skin other than providing a sealing layer. When it's incorporated into formulations that maximize its moisturizing properties, I enjoy using it on my body. The formula of this coconut milk is very moisturizing and very hydrating. Coconut oil isn't the main ingredient in here. Not only is coconut oil one of the ingredients in here, but there's a lot of other ingredients in here that work to moisturize and hydrate the skin and that help maximize coconut oil's ability to benefit the skin. It also has aloe vera in there and it has a ton of plant extracts like chamomile extract for calming benefits. It has shea butter in there for those dry skin sufferers. It has glycerin to hydrate the skin, which is a very classic standard hydrator. Just overall a ton of great ingredients for hydrating and moisturizing the skin. Plus, although Kopari is not a brand I 100% love simply because I don't believe in their facial products, but their body products have my favorite favorite scent of all time. I religiously love their body products, like their fragrance, just amazing, and their deodorant is the only deodorant I use in the winter time. In the summer, I need something more powerful that will actually stop my sweating and odor, but in the winter time, when I'm more dry and not sweating nearly as much, I only use Kopari's deodorant because it's natural it's moisturizing and it smells amazing and actually works really well for stopping odor. Aside from Kopari, the only other body moisturizer that I religiously love is from a tanning salon. And you may be thinking, that's different. You don't see influencers talking about tanning salon products. And the reason why I don't mind using tanning salon products is because I used to work at a tanning salon. That was my first job in the skin realm when I was really, really young and I was obsessed with the Forever After Body Moisturizer. It is an intensive body moisturizer that smells stunning. I am obsessed with the smell. It has amazing ingredients in there to deeply hydrate, nourish, and firm the skin. And what's great about tanning salon body moisturizers is that they're made for people who are exposing themselves to extreme environmental aggressors. So when you go in a tanning bed, that's magnified UV rays, which have an extreme damaging effect on the skin as we all know how bad UV is for the skin. But to help negate the negative effects of tanning, such as the dryness and cellular damage, these body moisturizers that they have for daily use that you're supposed to take home with you and use every single day have intensive nourishing ingredients and vitamins in there to help restore the skin after being exposed to such aggressive UV rays. First off, we have glycerin, which is again that classic hydrator. We have butylene glycol, which is one of my all-time favorite hydrating ingredients that you'll find really often in Korean skincare products. You have cetyl alcohol, which is a fatty alcohol for moisturizing the skin. You have triglyceride, which is a moisturizer. You have urea, which is a really intensive moisturizer. Shea butter as well, which we all know is a really great heavy moisturizer. Propylene glycol, which is another hydrator moisturizer. Caffeine for firming, which you don't often see in body care products. You're more often gonna see caffeine in skincare products for firming and tightening the skin and plumping the skin temporarily. Caffeine in body care products is great if you have fine lines or if you have cellulite, as it reduces the appearance of both. It has hemp seed oil, 
which is great for nourishing and moisturizing the skin. Grapeseed oil, again, great for nourishing and moisturizing the skin without being too heavy. And here's one that you guys are going to love. This product has been around for decades, okay? I originally worked at a tanning salon when I was like 19, yeah, 19, yeah. So almost 10, 10 years ago. Was I 19 or was I 18? No, no, definitely 19. Okay, and this was this was on the market before I worked at a tanning salon. Like this wasn't a new product when I worked at a tanning salon back when I was 19, which was almost 10 years ago, okay? It has squalane in it, which we all know is a very viral trending oil right now. It's lightweight, hydrating and moisturizing for those with oilier skin types or normal skin types. Ascorbic acid, which is AKA vitamin C. Quinoa seed oil. It has a wheat germ extract in there, which I can't remember the benefits of wheat germ extract. More hemp seed oil, I guess just in a different formulation. Citric acid, so another form of vitamin C as well. Another form of urea and some other miscellaneous smaller ingredients in there. So if you are an extreme dry skin sufferer, this is a body moisturizer you have to have. It is the all-time best body moisturizer I've probably ever used to this day, which is why I still have it 10 years later. Not the same product, I've bought this multiple times. So I will apply those body moisturizers and body products after I shower. I try to apply them throughout the week, but I usually forget unless my skin is excruciatingly dry, but usually just applying them after I shower is enough to keep me moisturized and my skin in a good condition until my next shower, which is either two to three days later. Skincare. Because this video is about my entire evening routine, we're gonna keep things pretty quick and snappy when it comes to skincare. So just a brief introduction, not going into any intense details. Starting off with my evening skincare routine, I always do a double cleansing method. This is the best way to ensure that you're perfectly cleansing your skin and removing all SPF and makeup from your pores. Now, of course, every day I don't wear makeup, but I do wear SPF every day and I'm definitely trying to make sure I don't not wear SPF every day. And the best way to make sure that it's completely lifted out of your pores is using a balm cleanser or oil cleanser. These have a lot of oils and emulsifiers in there and what oils do is they attract dirt and oil to the oil that is within the product, lifting dirt and debris from your pores. Now, of course, to make sure you're effectively removing all of that oil from your skin, you need to go in and second cleanse. I've recently been obsessed with the Sun By Me Buy By Blackhead Bubble Cleanser. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about this product because of the bubbling effect, and the marketing for this product does, of course, give the impression that the bubbles pull dirt and oil to them, but that's not the case. They also have a misconception that you're supposed to sit and wait for the bubbles to form on your skin, which can be a little bit annoying if that is the case. But this product actually bubbles instantly and the whole concept that is true to it is that you don't have to do the lathering process on your face, which can cause a lot of pulling and tension on the skin. So it bubbles instantly, so you get that lather without having to do the motion on the skin, making it a lot more gentle. I second cleanse with that to make sure all the oil is removed from my skin. Then I go in with a toner, and I have been enjoying the Round Lab Dokto toner, which is really popular and trendy in Korea. It essentially is a really mineral rich toner that works to balance the pH level of your skin after cleansing to bring it back to a neutral state while benefiting with the gentle minerals to build your skin's natural protective layer. That toner is not super, super hydrating, but it is nice to kind of neutralize your skin after cleansing. There are other toners out there that I feel like I prefer, such as the Clara Supple Preparation Toner. As someone with extremely dry skin, I do definitely need something that gives me more out of my toner. So with that being said, I have been incorporating the by wish trend quad active boosting essence as my second step after toner to give me more of that hydrating and nourishing benefit that the Dokdo toner just doesn't quite give me as someone with extremely dry skin this has been great because it has those propolis and nourishing ingredients in there that my skin craves, but in a convenient essence form. So it's great for adding into your routine if you're someone who does a ton of layering like I do. After that, I do use a serum or ample and these vary depending on how my skin is, but recently I find myself reaching a lot for the Snail True Sika Miracle Repair Serum by Sun By Me. This is probably one of the nicest 
Snail Mucin Essence I have used to this day. It's lightweight, it's really just like a great snail product that doesn't have a too much going on in there that makes it heavy on the skin. It's really quickly absorbing, it doesn't leave you feeling too sticky, you still get all that snail mucin that works to stimulate your skin cells natural repair cycle. It gives you hydration and nourishment for those anti-aging properties and layers amazingly in a layering skincare routine like I have. Next, I love going in with a calming gel product to not only give me hydration, but also calm my skin. And I have been really enjoying the Eunix Centella Calming Gel Cream. It says cream, but it's not a cream, it's literally just a gel. But it is great for calming down redness in the skin, irritation and sensitivities, and it gives that hydrating power that I need to help my dehydration levels in my skin and give any products Additionally, that I have in my routine that contain hyaluronic acid, the water content that it needs to pull from instead of pulling that water content from my skin into the hyaluronic acid. So it gives me the right kind of moisture I need. For night cream, I switch it up between a few, again, depending on how dry my skin is, but I have found myself reaching a lot for the Sun By Me Snail True Sicka Miracle Repair Cream. Again, really great snail properties in there that give me the moisture I need with the hydration I need, with the anti-aging I need all in one product without, again, being too heavy. As someone with super dry skin, but also who is concerned about anti-aging, I do need to consistently be using anti-aging products in my routine, but sometimes they can be too heavy, especially on younger skin. So this is a great lightweight cream that still is nourishing and moisturizing and anti-aging without being too heavy. And like I said, because my skin is really, really dry, I do need that oil content. And I've recently been really enjoying the Antipods Divine Face Oil Rose Hip and Avocado Oil. It is not too heavy, as some oils can definitely be way too heavy on my skin. And like, my skin is so finicky, either it's too dry or it's too moisturized or it's too dehydrated. But this one has been great adding into my night cream. For me, oils really just sit on my skin if I apply them individually. So I love mixing three to four drops into whatever my night cream is for that night. And then my skin really absorbs the oil wonderfully. If I apply my night cream and then apply my oil straight over top, it really just sits on my skin and doesn't absorb at all. And I just feel slick. But when I mix my night cream and my oil together, it works wonderfully and actually absorbs into my skin. Now previously I would always use something like aloe vera gel or a gel type sleeping mask to seal everything in, but this winter has been atrocious on my skin. It actually has been horrible. So I have been resorting, desperately resorting to anything that would seal in and maintain the moisture on my face. Cause I've literally been waking up in the morning very dry even though I am using those silk pillowcases that significantly help. Using a silk pillowcase like the pillowcase from Lily Silk is amazing because comparatively to using a standard pillowcase, you would wake up ex extremely dry. But with using a silk pillowcase, um, I don't really wake up dry. My skincare is still present on my face. It's a great way to get all the benefits of your skincare while you sleep without your pillowcase stealing it from you. Lately, my skin just is so thirsty, like so, so, so thirsty. And the air is so, so, so dry. My gosh, it's so dry here that I'm just evaporating in my sleep essentially, even though I use a humidifier at full blast beside my face, like it's it's that bad. Um, so I've really been loving using a wash off mask, like specifically the I'm from ginseng mask in a very, very small minuscule amount as kind of a sealing layer over my skincare as the final step. Not only am I getting the anti-aging, antioxidant and firming benefits from ginseng, at the same time, but because it's a mask, it really does provide a sealing effect. And when I use this, I wake up and I'm not evaporated. Like my skincare, my skin looks amazing. Everything's great. And um, if you are desperately dry and you you have the silk pillowcase, you have the humidifier, you're using the facial oils, you're using all the products, but you're still waking up evaporated. Like it's not that it's not that the pillowcases or the like the humidifier is not working. It's literally your your skin is just like evaporating because it's so dry in the air. Try using a wash off mask and it can't be a peeling mask or a modeling mask. It has to be just a really nice natural 
wash off type mask. I really do love this one. And um, it really, really helps like huge improvement. And that is it you guys. That is my entire evening routine for everything. That is my evening skincare routine. That's my body care routine. That's my hair care routine. And that's my sleep routine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some insight on some products that you can get to really maximize your evening routine to benefit everything to do with your hair and your skin and your overall sleeping quality. Again, I want to say thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring this video. We wouldn't be here without our sponsors, you guys, so definitely check them out. They are the reason why I can keep going and making YouTube videos for you guys, so give them a check out. Definitely consider them as I truly do enjoy Enjoy their product and love everything silk related when it comes to anti-aging skincare hair care and body care and sleep quality so definitely check them out remember to check me out on my social media channels where I upload every single day you can catch me every day on my Instagram when I'm not uploading here on YouTube I also live stream on Twitch almost every single day so if you ever want to hang out with me live ask some questions and even play video games from time to time you can catch me there if that's your cup of tea and you can also catch me on my vlogging channel where I upload weekly vlogs of my life and what I'm getting up to when I am not on my social media. You can also catch my old Japan, Korea, and Melbourne, Australia vlogs there when I lived for a few years in all of those countries. So definitely check out my vlogging channel. You can catch all the behind the scenes and see more of me and my life. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Remember to subscribe to see more videos and hit the notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube will not be so kind to share my videos with you guys. Really, YouTube does not like me. YouTube will not tell you I uploaded unless you're hitting that subscribe and that notification bell. So definitely check that out and I will see you guys next week. Bye.